Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to be painting a really cute uh, bunny. I am going to be showing you step by step all the way through, <clears throat> excuse me, how to paint him with acrylics. Um, I say this is probably a medium difficulty painting. I kind of intended it for it to be a beginner, but um, he had a lot of little details in here, so he's a little bit more tricky than I thought he might be. But if you've done my fox or bear painting, um, he's kind of on, along the lines of that difficulty. Um, so we've got a few paint colors here. I've got my husband Mark with me tonight. Hey there, everybody. You got second billing after the paint. <laughs> That's okay. Fame has its price. <laughs> I keep my paints in a plastic bag here. I use a foam plate. <clears throat> Helps keep them moist. <clears throat> and I have a spray bottle that I spritz them with. I'm going to spray them right now. Real quick. I'm also going to put out some glazing medium. This is a Gold Golden's glazing medium is a little bit um, better for allowing extended drying time, so I like to use it <clears throat> to help give me a little bit extra time to blend my paints. Okay, so with this one, um, normally I would paint the background a solid color. If you watch any of my other videos, I usually do it that way. But I decided because the blue and this brown were so opposite, I didn't really want it as an undertone, so I just drew around it and we're just going to paint around his face today. So um, let me show you the basic drawing. <clears throat> I've already kind of pre-sketched it but I will let me give you the image too so you can look while I'm doing this. So the bunnies um, kind of peeking up from the bottom of the canvas so I wanted to make sure that I utilized the um, the most part of the canvas so I left just a little bit at the top here and the face and the ears are about um, halfway so about halfway up the canvas is where the top of his head is maybe just a little bit below that um, so that's kind of a good spot to just kind of make a mark um, for yourself and then his ears and his face are just about the same from the top of the ear to where it hits the top of the head to the top of his face to his chin is about the same distance too. So you can mark those two marks and then move it down if you need to um, adjust for his little paws. Just leave just a little bit of room at the bottom for these little curved paws. So I'll start there. And they're just kind of these little semi-circles. Pretty small. And they just come on either side of his face. His chin is just this little semi-circle here. And then there's like a Y, upside down Y right there. And then another Y right here. So it's like a two splits there for his face. His cheeks come out the side from the mouth and curl around and all the way up to the top of the nose. The nose is kind of a oh, semi-circle. It's a little, little bit of a diamond shape right there. And then um, you want to make sure you're doing it big enough. So his nose is, is just below the halfway mark. If you kind of split the, the face in half, the eyes are sitting on top of the halfway, and the nose is kind of just below it. So make sure you're making it big enough for the little bunny's face there. Then there's two more jowls that kind of come out from the sides, and you can make these as large or as small as you want. Some bunnies have bigger jowl cheeks than others. And then the top of the head is kind of a pear shape. So if you kind of look at this whole head, it's sort of got that pear shape to it. So it's just kind of curved down, comes in a little bit at the eyes and then curves back out. Just like that. Then the eyes themselves are, if you were to draw a circle here and here, you're going to cut off the side of this circle here just a little bit. So this part is kind of the circle here and then this part gets cut off. And it points down at the nose a little bit and this 
uh, top of the eye or the bottom of the eye here is kind of almost perfectly diagonal from the bottom of the nose. So you can kind of see, make sure that these are even, that you've got them level. Um, so looks good, I think. Then his ears come up from the sides of the head, curve in, up. There's a little separation between them up here. This ear I had curving up and out this way. Round off the top. Come down almost straight. And then angle it back in here. Like that. Then there is a split. You see the inside of the ear here. And there's a little bit of an outline on the ear on this side, all the way around. Okay, then this side, I kind of did it a little bit more floppy-eared, so I brought it up, and I brought my angle out a lot more sharply. Check your ears to make sure that they're the same size, so you want them to end up at the same length, straight, and then it curves back in right here. Yep, yeah. and you kind of want them about the width, the same width too, so check that as well. Um, then there's just a little bit of flap that kind of comes up like this, it comes real close to the ear there. There's some dark area. And outline the outside of the ear here. Okay. And there's our bunny. He's pretty easy. Not too hard. All right, so I'm going to outline him first with the teal color. And if you don't have teal, you can mix it with phthalo green and phthalo blue with some white. And I'm going to mix a little bit of phthalo green and white into it to make it a little bit more on the green side of the scale and just use a little bit of that with it. A little bit of both and just kind of mix them on my palette or on my canvas as I paint it. I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel. It's actually a um, masonite panel today, so it's pre-gessoed and ready to go. I'm just going to paint around his face real quick, and I'm leaving some visible brush strokes on the sides here. On my example one, I did my edge is kind of raw, so if you like that it, that look, um, you can leave a little bit of space alongside the outside ed edges of your canvas. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. I just kind of was playing with it today. Didn't want to fill it in all the way. <clears throat> so obviously I'm ready for spring because butterfly last week and or Saturday or and then the bunnies today and I think we're gonna do I don't know what we're gonna do Sunday but I think Sunday. or Saturday I mean this week sorry I thought we were adding a third video there I was no. like really <laughs> do I know no <laughs> did I not tell you I'm gonna request overtime pay then <laughs> Sunday pay all that stuff yeah. holiday pay <laughs> it is St. Patrick's coming up. That's true, yeah. And here in 2017, the uh, time change happens on this Saturday, Sunday. So. Oh, really? Yes, we'll move forward an hour. This Saturday? Yep, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Move forward an hour, so that means what? Get an extra hour of sleep, is that right? No. No, you lose an hour lose sleep. An hour sleep. I never can get that right. 
darn it. And I have to drive next week, too. <laughs> Carpool. No staying up late on Sunday. All right, so just filling this in quickly. I'm okay, somebody's asking, is the background on the painting you're doing lighter than the example that you are showing in the corner? Um, it is not. It's It looks lighter, I think, because of the lights. Um, the photograph just, just uh, was taken a little bit darker. It, it, it was a little bit darker in the studio, I think, when I took the photograph. But no, it's the same color as the example one. But you could always darken it if you wanted it darker. Or you can use whatever color for the background you want. Really, I think it'd look like good in all kinds of number different different colors. I'm just in the mood for I like I, this teal color just really appeals to me so not just not just because it's my favorite color but it's also it's a good spring color so any excuse I can get to use it. And I think it looks good with this kind of the oranginess of the bunny because um, sort of opposite the blues and um, orange are opposite on the color wheel. So it's a good contrast to our bunny. Okay, filling it in. I'm just being careful. I'm not... getting too far in on my drawing, but I do want to go right up to my line so that I don't have to come back in and add more of this later. Okay, we are almost done. our bunny background. He does look a lot lighter on, on the screen. I think my white balance is a little bit high on the video, but it's all right. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Okay, so to start, I'm going to use my angle brush. This is a 3 8 inch angle, and I'm going to fill in his ears. I'm just going to start from the top down. Um, I'm going to grab some raw sienna, some um, unbleached titanium, and make this kind of a yellow color, brownish yellow color for the inside of the ears. Go ahead and go all the way up to the top. Do the same color on this side. I'm just going to be um, using the the shape of the ears to direct my brush strokes. So um, they're going to come up as I go up the ears. I'm going to keep my brush strokes in that direction. I'm going to grab some burnt umber now. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Let me see if I can move this so I can see. You can see my, what I'm doing in my palette a little bit better. Turn it around. There we go. Okay, I forgot to go over my colors. Yellow oxide, burnt uh, raw sienna. So yellow oxide, raw sienna. This is Naples yellow, burnt sienna, 
burnt umber, carbon black, quinacridone magenta, unbleached titanium, and white. And then I had teal and uh, thalo green for my background colors. Okay. So I've mixed with um, some of the burnt umber and a little touch of the raw sienna to kind of orange it up a little bit with this ear color, the inside of the ear color. So it's got a little bit of unbleached titanium to soften it. And I'm just going to dab on some brown fur. How you doing, hun? You're sighing over there. Kind of breathing, actually. Breathing heavily. <laughs> I'm doing great. Good? Yeah. Okay. Did you have a good day at work today? I haven't even talked to you since you got home. It was uh, very, very busy. Yeah. Today's go by very, very fast now. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's the boss man now. Or one, of, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, V1, I guess. <laughs> Went from three to one. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your job just got a little bit that much more demanding now. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then I come here and work part time. I know. And this, then I you come in this home sweatshop and here. You to work again. Yeah, I know. Sorry, hon. Well, I'm trying to get it to where you can retire and I can support you full time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as long as it's not hire somebody else to do my job, no. I'll be okay. <laughs> so right. somebody asked, "How cute is this bunny?" It's very cute. It's very it's cute. It's on a scale of like 1 to 10. It's like an 11. It's an 11? I think so. So, so why don't cute. they just make the scale go to 11? No, you'd have to ask the <laughs> final tap folks. <laughs> <laughs> they came up with that. Okay, so the answer to that is an 11. Yes. <laughs> That's how cute it is. I couldn't resist. I, I found a photo. So I've been looking at photos of bunnies. It's been hard. It's been a rough week, you know gonna look up cute animals okay so up here I kind of just barely touched I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and so I kind of just uh, washed a little bit on at the top here of the ear it's a little bit softer and I might just kind of go back over the top there with the oh, another coat of the highlight color but so you can kind of see I'm gonna z I'll zoom in for you manually here the old-fashioned way. You can kind of see how I use my brush to sort of create some fur texture. Mark thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> Glad to amuse you. I think that was funny. <laughs> no comment. I'll just leave it there. No that's comment. just funny. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing, just tap, 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 and pull my brush kind of along this ear, give it a little bit of texture. We're going to add a lot more layers onto this, but we'll, it'll kind of do some of the work for us if we lay the color on in this way. Grab a little bit more of the darker brown here, I'm going to make this side a little bit darker. You can see I left a little bit of space between the edge of the ear for this color to go on. I'm hoping that this will be an hour le less than I don't know. I think it took me longer than that this afternoon, so I'm trying to... I'll be right back. I'm going to go turn the dinner off. You are? Yeah, I forgot well, to do that. Well, no, it still has another. <laughs> you joking? Ha. Huh. We got. What did we make? What was it called? We are making carnitas, carnitas tonight. Yes. We, as in, I put it in the oven. Mark, Mark came up with it. All right, grabbing some of that lighter color. The. Um, bleach titanium and raw sienna mixture. I'm gonna blend back over this edge. I 
can say that people in chat are laughing at the uh, notion of keeping it under an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have some regulars in here it, that know better. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. Don't worry. She's just about done. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Touch back over that. I feel like that's getting too far down there, so I'm just going to use my finger and rub off a little bit of that. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. I'm going to let that dry so that I don't rub any of it off by my putting on more layers. I do want to put a little bit of highlight up here, though. I did, didn't do that, so I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium. And use my angle brush. You can use a smaller brush if you want to. Um, for this it can be kind of diff difficult getting around that corner there. So yeah, adding some highlight to the tip of the ear there and I'll do a little bit on this side too. Just on the outside of the ear. Okay. Some, somebody's asked the best framing option for a canvas board, and uh, um, I see the the example that I want done for my office back there. Oh, do yeah. Do we want to do a visual on that or just? Yeah, I mean, you can, yeah, grab the, Okay. grab it. I can stick this one from yesterday in it, or from last week, Saturday. Show them this. Okay, so this kind of canvas is what I, oh, <laughs> frame is what I usually it's get. Frame. It's so okay, uh, thirty dollars, which meant I paid fifteen <laughs> because they are half price. And oh, you just pop the pop the um, board into the back, and sometimes it'll stick on its own if it's stiff enough. Um, there's the butterfly from Saturday. So let me zoom out a little bit. I feel like it can't see it. There you go. See? So that's what I usually use. Um, and then you can put some little finishing nails in here. Um, and then I usually run um, some screws in the back here and do some wire across. So, but that's what I would recommend is those open back frames. They have them at Hobby Lobby for, you know, half price almost all the time, you know, in other places too, Michael's and different places. So, um, we just happen to have Hobby Lobby in town, so where I tend to get mine. Ooh, okay, a little bit back up. There we go. Okay, so doing pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and keep on going with his face. What I'm doing is going, um, like one shade darker than I want to end up with, um, putting in a little bit of the darker tones first, and then I'll put um, my really dark hairs and my really light hairs in at the very end. So you can kind of see where I added a few really, really dark and really, really light, like white ones along here, some white ones along the tip and the nose and things like that. So we're adding kind of our medium values in first, and then we'll build the darker layers um, around it. So. For the face, I used um, yellow oxide and burnt umber with a little bit of the unbleached titanium. And I'm just going to lay that on. Behind the ears is a little bit darker, so it should be a little bit lighter than the ear color was. Just gonna tap that on. The fur will kind of grow straight up from the nose, straight back. So, I'm just gonna tap so that if there's any brush strokes showing, it'll look like little hairs in here. right up to the nose and bring it out around the sides of the face too 
and I'm still keeping it as I go around the sides of the cheeks they're gonna start to turn so this is our focal point I guess our nose would probably be our or really this part of the mouth is our um, middle of this axis I guess so you everything kind of will radiate from there somebody's asked if you could keep the paint palette in the picture yes there we go we can buy this extra ten dollars <laughs> Thing you gave in way too easy there. We need, we need to charge him for that. We got super chat. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, just pull it off screen and say, okay, we need some super chat money if you want to see the palette. You know, the painting's free. We didn't say anything about the palette. <laughs> oh, goodness. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Yeah, just you just don't want to have to go back to work Monday. So. <laughs> okay, I see what you're up to. Okay, so there's that, and then there's like a dark area that's around the muzzle here. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of this burnt umber and do that part with the darker. And I'm going to kind of just use the tip of my brush to do some little fur-like area. Should I zoom in here? I feel like I'm kind of far away. Well, well if you zoom in, they won't be able to see the palette. That's true. So they That's true. can't have their cake and eat it too. No. They can decide. Okay. A uh, question came in asking, what do you use to sign your paintings? Um, well, when I did the, when I do it on paper, like the one... This one is just my pit pen. I just use the um, Faber Castell pit pen. They're India ink, uh, water fast, water uh, proof, and light fast. So they're not going to fade and they're not going to go anywhere. If you got water on it, it wouldn't wipe off. So, okay, so darker, and then I'm going to grab some of the lighter color. Okay, they're saying, okay, you can zoom in. I can zoom in, okay. Yeah. All right. Well. I don't want to hear everybody complaining that they can't see the palette. Because <laughs> I've got yes, a moderator sir. wrench here. Oh, that's true. That's right. Okay. Get the power. All right. So underneath the nose and out from the split here is like lighter. So I grabbed the unbleached titanium and I'm just tapping that in to this wet paint. Um, do one side at a time if you're, if it's taking you a while, just do this whole side and then do this whole side so that you just want to make sure that these colors are still a little bit wet when you're pulling uh, your paint into them and that way they'll blend. If they've dried, that's fine too. You can just put a little bit more of this kind of medium color down right uh, at that area where they shift. Okay, so he already looks a little fluffy, right? Um, you know, if we wanted to just keep him really, really simple, we could just do him, whole, you know, the whole thing like this, and we wouldn't have to put in our, you know, uh, little tiny brush strokes. Um, makes a little bit more of a simplified version. Um, I'm going to grab some or burnt umber now. And I'm just going to use the edge to tap in my mouth. The line. And the underside of the nose there. We'll come back in with some black to darken it up. But it'll be dark right there. Just a little bit crooked. Okay, then pick up a little bit of the that sort of medium brown color and I'm just gonna tap at the top of the nose. This section is a little bit dark right there <clears throat> and then as it gets toward this inside of the nose there's actually a little bit of 
just a slight tint of pink. So I've just picked up a teeny, 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 tiny bit of the um, quinacridone magenta and blended that in. I still have the brown in there, so it's kind of neutralized it and made it more of a brownish color, but it's got a little tiny bit of pink to it. And we're just gonna do that right there. Soften up that little bit of nose. It's so cute. And then we'll put a little bit of that pink right up underneath the nostril too. There and there. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna wipe that off. Sorry. And then grab a little bit more of the little bit lighter color. This color right here. So it was like a little bit of the unbleached titanium with my browns. And I'm going to fill that in right under his mouth like that. And these go straight down so you can kind of pull them down like that. I got this a little bit too wide right there. <clears throat> okay, so he looks a little angry right now, but we'll kind of hopefully fix that. Yeah, especially if you just don't paint the eyes in. Just leave it just like <laughs> that. a little bit creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and well, let's go ahead and paint the eyes in so he's not so creepy. Oh, come on. I'm going to grab the burnt umber and start with that. They're actually going to end up black, but I want... Um, if you notice, I didn't go all the way to the outside edge, and I did that on purpose because I want a little bit of this um, outline color to show so just going to tap in like that what's the question <laughs> do i look that helpless <laughs> well you're grabbing my color chart i wonder yeah i'm touching your color chart don't mess with it. Yeah, yeah, I know you can't reach me because you're taped down, so <laughs> I'm really brave right now. No, the question came in asking, what is the difference between Mars Black and Carbon Black? Okay. So my answer was the name, but that didn't go over too well, so I was just trying to check. Trying so to check. There's your color chart. I'll They're very the similar. Professionals. They look pretty similar to mm -hmm. me. They're very similar. Carbon Black's a little shinier. But they're both pretty much a true black. I think uh, I think carbon black has a little bit more of a true black, like true deep, deep. I think it's darker myself, but that's just my perception of it. There's Mars. Whoops. Whoa. Way too close. Mars and carbon there. And ivory's in the middle. You can see it's more brown. So... Carbon's the new black that you're seeing a lot in uh, golden uh, when they, you know, are putting out their, their um, new sets of color. You know, you've got white and the black that they've been using is the carbon black, and I really, really like it. <clears throat> so. But if you have Mars, don't, don't feel like you have to go buy, and buy it. It'll work just fine. So, okay, I'm going to grab some unbleached titanium now. And around the eye, there's just a little bit of unbleached titanium. So it's just a little bit lighter color, kind of outlines the eye. I'm going to tap it on so that it doesn't look like it's, you know, a complete outline of it. You want it to look a little bit fuzzy. And just try to make sure that these are the same size. So really kind of take your time on the eyes. Compare. You could even take a tracing of one, you know, if you get one done and you really like it, and you want to make sure the other one matches, just take a tracing of it and make sure that you uh, trace it onto the other side, uh, flip it. Okay, there we go. It's going to look like he's got, you know, some circles around his eyes right now, but that's all right. We'll fix it later. 
All right, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of this right here since I've got it on my brush, brighten up that little section right there. Okay. I think this one's like the older brother to our bunny from this afternoon because he's a little bit more jolly. He's got a bigger face too, so I made him a little bit bigger. All right, and we grab the burnt umber and come right up under here and do some nice dark right up under the chin. Having this really dark contrast will push that chin forward, make it look like his face. Is sticking out from the neck and body. And grab a little bit of the, let me grab the raw sienna. Spray my palette, let's get the fire. Why did we whisper for that? I don't know. Just, Were you sneaking up on it? I was. So I was like, okay. It's going to look like he's got a t-shirt on right now, but that's all right. He's <laughs> got a tuxedo jacket. Like a, he's not going to have glasses. No, but, you know, I was going to, originally I was planning on doing like a boho bunny with like, like flowers in his hair, but um, then I decided to do the flowers on the sides. But you could totally do like the flowers in his hair and stuff, whatever you wanted to. Okay, so grabbing the raw sienna. Mixing it. It's gonna look messy right now, but we'll we'll make it make sense later. So there's that. We'll do this over here. Okay, and then I'm going to use the unburnt umber, and I'm going to draw in some little fingers, just three little fingers there. We'll blend those in later, but kind of help us know where to put them. sit them back a little bit okay so that'll be good <clears throat> let me go back up to the ears here and grab some of my burnt umber now these ears are dry I'm gonna add a little bit of the burnt umber with this brush darken it up right there darken it up right here a little bit using that tip of my brush to sort of draw in these little small hairs. Darken it up right here on the side of the face. I feel like his forehead needs to come out a little bit on that side. There we go. Okay, I'm just kind of blending that color in. I grabbed a little bit of raw sienna, just blending that dark, that top area there in a little bit. I'll put another layer of this color on. Oops, moving down. Okay, almost was off. I caught it in time. Good job. Thanks. I was just about to tell you that. Were you? Yeah. 
Seriously? For, yeah. No, For real? No, not really. I didn't think so. Come on, you know me better than that. <laughs> okay, there's a little dark area right under the eyes there. So I want to darken that up. I'm going to leave this area kind of bright right there. So I'll bring this dark color right under the eyes a little bit. A little bit around the cheeks right here maybe. Maybe a little bit down here. Just making sure now that I have all my area of the bunny filled in. And that I've got my values pretty close to where I want them to be. And I think he's looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole thing now. There he is. Cute. What were you going to say? Oh, somebody's asked if you have ever used polychrome pencils. Mm, I don't think so. And neither have I, in case you were wondering. Are they a watercolor pencil or just a regular color pencil? Uh, I think they're a color pencil. Probably color. No, I don't have I don't those. Know. I have the uh, Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils that I like. And I also use Prismacolor pencils too, some. But I don't use color pencils a whole lot. I tend to go for the brush before I pick up a pencil. Okay, he's looking so cute. So, I mean, honestly, um, you know, he's he's pretty much a bunny at this point. You, you know, you can tell what he is. And you could uh, just do the eyes and call it good. Um, and I think he's really cute. So don't feel like you have to keep on going and, you know, put on the... Uh, if this part was hard for you, you know, you could probably stop here and be good. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit more of this uh, quinacridone magenta and mix it with the the um, unbleached titanium. I'm having a hard time saying that word tonight. Okay, I've been corrected a couple times. Okay. It's Sorry. Hold on here. Let me scroll back up. <clears throat> Polychromos. Mm -hmm. P-O-L-Y-C-R-O-M-O-S. Mm -hmm. That's word so no okay still no okay and still no for me too <laughs> all right put a little hint of pink right there and a little hint of, hint of pink right here polychromos and i've heard of them i just don't, I haven't used them I'm going to put a little bit of pink up here to make it look like maybe they're translucent. Wherever the light is kind of shining through the, the ear, it'll have this kind of pink tint to it. But I don't want to put too much of it and make it look like it's, you know, unnaturally pink in there. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium and mix a little bit more of that in and go back in over it and just soften that up. Blend it in. Grab a little bit of the white. I've switched to my um, quarter inch bright now. So I can get like sm smaller hairs from it. And I'm going to use this white right along this edge here. Pull some fur into the ear with the white. A little bit on the tip of the ear, a little bit on this inside here coming in too. Get some nice bright ones in there too. Get 
some white in here. A little bit of white on the outside of this ear. white right in the middle there to blend in that uh, ear there okay I feel like we got a little bit pink on me so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Naples yellow with the teeny teeny tiniest bit of burnt umber and I'm just gonna come along here and blend that in over the top of some of these pink areas just to kind of soften that up. Make it look a little bit more natural and grab a little bit more of the dark and do kind of a shadow right there. That burnt umber mixed in with it. You can use some glazing medium at this point if you want to get this blend better. That's looking pretty good. I think I want it really nice and dark right here, so I'm going to grab a little bit of the burnt umber with a little bit of the quinacridone. Do just a tiny touch of that right there on the inside of the ear. Give it a hollow. Let's do it the same thing on this side. Okay, this ear, the hairs come up higher. Bring the lighter color down on this one a little bit more. Grab that unbleached titanium and just tap in some of the lighter hairs down lower. Just soften that blend between the two some white. Okay, there we go. Looking good. Okay, I'm going to grab the burnt umber and I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I'm going to go back under this chin now and darken up that area again. Really dark. Just tap some hairs. Use the edge and just pull down. It's really dark right there. Okay, I'm going to grab my Number two round now. I'll go ahead and zoom in for the eyes. Get his eyes nice and big here. Make sure they're centered. There we go. All right, so for the eyes, I'm going to grab black. And I'm going to do the outside of it and the bottom of it pure black. So it's going to like the inside, outside sections, pure black. I'll outline it and leave just a little bit right here that's that brown color still. There we go. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of unbleached titanium and mix a gray. And I'm going to use that to outline the eye. It's kind of, kind of a couple shades lighter than the, than the black. And I'm going to go along the bottom of the eye. 
and just give it a little bit of an outline very lightly just that's giving it a lid right We're giving it a little bit of an eyelid there you can put a little bit on top too just slightly all right then I'm gonna grab the clean that out I'm gonna grab the teal color that was our background color mix a little tiny bit of black with it to make a gray green I'm going to use that in this section here there and here and I'm leaving a tiny bit of black outline make sure it's pretty dark you don't want it super light at this point because we're going to put some bright highlights on top so you want this to be dark enough that it just looks like a reflection And I'm kind of just blending out the edges. So I'm going to grab a little bit of black and just blend over the edge a little bit. But it's okay if it, it's actually a hard edge because reflections and eyes can be very, very sharp looking. So that looks all right. I'm going to grab some white now. And mix a little bit of that into some of the teal just slightly just pick up a little bit of blue and I'm going to use it around the outside here and here from the kind of top corner down to sort of round out those eyes we want them to look like a circle right there And then on the inside here, I'm going to curve in here and here. I cut that a little bit close right there. I'm going to grab a little bit of black. So you kind of want to imagine this being a circle here, that this line is sort of broken. Um, so that'll make it make makes sense if this is a kind of a continuation of that line there you're just not seeing the whole line outline it part of the eyelid is covering part of the eye <clears throat> grab some white and I'm going to take most of it off my brush and we're going to just first we're going to just kind of lightly brush on some highlights almost dry brush them along that top edge there and here this one actually in my picture was kind of coming sideways so I did it that way did I did I take it off camera when I did that sorry if I did I'm sorry yeah I'm just seeing bunny eyes on my feed there <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean well, I'm watching delayed like everybody else. And so, okay. Well, no, I, I see you putting highlights in there. Okay. All right. Well, I moved it when I put the highlights on this side, so I just want to make sure I didn't move oh, it outside Okay. Wait a minute. Here it comes. Oh, yeah, just barely. Barely moved it outside the edge. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I just touched it right there. Now I'm going back in with really bright white, and I'm just going to brighten up a couple of spots. a little bit of gray kind of a light gray I'm gonna bring a little bit of that in right there and there maybe a little bit in the bottom again 
right there just to give it kind of a glassiness We're looking pretty good. I think I want to darken up that outside right there just a little bit. I feel like it got a little too bright right there. There we go. All right. Not too bad. Um, we will put in a few eyelashes. I'm going to grab my little spotter. And some water down my black. So I've got a really fine bristled brush now. And I'm going to put in eyelashes from the top corner out. Set it down and pull out. And I'd probably turn my turn my canvas around, but I don't want to go off camera again, so I learned my lesson. Okay. So there's our bunny. We can give him some nostrils with this black. They kind of go right in here. They're sort of just right there and there. Kind of a line with a bulbous end on it slightly. I'm going to tap in just a little bit of dark right here, but I don't want it too dark. So. All right, now we're just going to add a few little hairs, and you'll be amazed at how just adding a few little extra detail hairs is going to make this bunny um, come to life here. So I'm going to grab the Naples yellow first, and just starting up here by the ears, I'm going to start adding in. Whoop, Make sure that I don't have a big drop of water on there. Adding a little bit of water to your paint will help them be a little bit easier to work with, but I'm not wanting to fill the whole area in with, with hair. So my idea is not to um, put in every single little hair on this bunny. I'm just trying to find this sort of strategic um, highlight spots. I'm going to grab some of the burnt, burnt umber now and go back in with some burnt umber. Add some of those in and around both sides. Just adding a few here and there will create that illusion of fur. I don't have to fill in the whole thing now. You could if you want it super, super realistic looking, but we're not going for that today. We're just kind of going for kind of a cute painterly look. So, but yeah, if I was going in for like super realism, I would do multiple, multiple layers of hair, All right, fine little fur, um, make some of them come off the edge. between the ears there and one of the things with this that's um, really important is to not have them all starting in a straight line so don't do them all like in a straight line across you want to kind of go up above and below some so that there's uh, varied heights to where you're starting and stopping these hairs if that makes sense. So I'm not going to do them all in a row. Um, I'm going to bring some up, some down. What you laughing at, hon? Oh, somebody asked, what uh, do you do with all your paintings? Oh. And I said that they're stacking up behind you there. And yes. uh, pretty soon we're going to have to, we'll run out of room and we'll have to move. <laughs> And then they said, well, they'll buy some. Oh, yeah. And, and, or would you be willing to sell them? And I said, well, heck, I'll sell them some. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just said, I'll meet them down in the alley. <laughs> Don't bring the police. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. 
Yeah, I've actually been asked recently too about that. And I think we might do a sale on my Facebook page sometime this summer. Um, I gotta organize that and figure out how to work it out, but um, do some sort of auction type sale on some of these paintings. Cause yeah, we definitely do need to move them out. They're taking up a lot of room. Okay, so I'm going to put in more for the little hairs here. Somebody's asked, what brush are you using for the hairs? This is the 3 Ot. It's a 3-0 spotter. Okay. And... Oh, they asked what brand it was. This is a Princeton Select. So... I'm really liking the Princeton brand lately. This, these are very cheap ones, too. These are their kind of economy line of brushes, so they weren't super expensive. Okay, I'm going to add a few hairs along the top of his head. These will be a little bit lighter than those ones that are right above it. That'll push those ears back a little bit. I'm ending up putting in a lot more individual hairs than I did with this one than, than the example. So, sorry, I know we're already at seven. Okay, I'm going to try to fast forward here. Speed paint. Mm. Let me get my number two round because I think I did some of these with the number two. It'll go a little faster try to keep them small with it. It's a little bit bigger round and it'll be able to cover a little bit better ground. So I'm going to mix my burnt or raw sienna with my yellow oxide here, or Naples yellow I mean. And I'm just going to add a few What are you laughing at over there? I can tell you're laughing at me. No, no, no. I just told them <laughs> that I'm opening the bidding at $1,000. <laughs> and they're not really going for it for some reason. It? No, oh. I don't understand. And put some yellow oxide above the eye there. Yeah, if they have a particular one they're interested in, they can contact me, I guess. But I, I don't know exactly how much. I am talked to my gallery in Little Rock to see if they want me to bring them up to them. I haven't heard back from them yet. So I don't usually bring my tutorial paintings to them. So, okay, grabbing a little bit more of the lighter color with the un unbleached titanium here. I'm just kind of blending over and making sure that these are sort of blended in. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm just really tapping in over the top very lightly with some dry brushing. And it's creating that sort of fuzziness to it. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium, put a nice bright section above the eye here and here. That'll really pop those out a little bit. Some of the lighter color right above the nose here. This 
the unbleached titanium here I'm using now. Just let the dry brushing over him. Okay, let's grab a little bit more and we're gonna do the nose area here. I'm gonna grab some white actually. And do some white little fur coming right up underneath the nose. little bit of that white above his nose here. Just a few. A little bit of it right here on the inside of his eye coming up. And then there's like a little white spot on his forehead here too that had so I'm just gonna tap in a few little white hairs if you notice I'm leaving space in between so that it kind of gives it some depth so if I was to fill it in with white it would just look like a solid white section there so it's just kind of a matter of adding layers slowly so that it builds up grab some of the burnt umber now and mix that in with what I've got on my brush and maybe a tiny bit of burnt sienna Give it a little reddish tint and then I'm going to go over the nose here and just softly tap over the nose to blend it into the rest of the face there a little bit. There's a little bit of Shadow right there. Whoop, I had a little too much white on my brush. Grab a little bit more of that brown, burnt umber. Come over and around that nostril slightly. And grab a little bit more of the black and darken that up again. I lost it. <coughs> a little bit of the quinacridone magenta with my unbleached titanium mix up a little bit of that pink again and I'm going to use just a little bit of it right here whoa it's a little bit bright let me wipe a little bit of that off tap tap in a little bit of highlight at the top of the nose here mostly over the nostril section there. Just want to bring that forward a little bit. Okay. Sorry, hun. You know what? To apologize to done. me. I have my drink here. I'm doing good. <laughs> That's true. You are lubricated tonight. <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. I mean, it's not like you, you know, just saying. Of course, it's big drinkers, <laughs> not. <laughs> hey, YouTube just told me that you're streaming live. Oh, really? Yeah. Just now? Well, just, no, I just, just checked my phone. And here, uh, just noticed that you broke the 59,000 subscriber level. During the video. Wow. So that's great. Thank you so much for everybody who's 59, that's following amazing. Angela. We appreciate it. We're going to hit 100,000 this year. I know it. We're, mm -hmm. we're on track. Yep. I'm, 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 that's my goal. You're putting a lot of pressure on me to keep bringing Stickman. I know. I mean, I know that's why the, the numbers yeah. are going up. I so. mean, it is. Yeah. As soon as you started helping me, it's mm -hmm. like, boom. <laughs> So yeah, we thank everybody who's joined mm -hmm. us tonight. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. Subscribe to Angela's channel. 
The links to all the uh, materials for this painting are down below in the description, as well as uh, links to her social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yep. I think that's it, right? We don't do Snapchat. Patreon. Patreon. Yep. Pinterest. Oh, yeah. Pinterest. Forgot about that one. Yep. All that good stuff. Okay, so small little brush strokes here just to kind of fill in around the outside. I've got a little bit of the darker um, burnt umber with a little bit of the uh, unbleached titanium here. I'm going to use those to kind of add little hairs there. And as I get towards the face, I'm using a little bit more of the yellow and unbleached titanium, the maple's yellow. He's looking cute. This one's a little bit more serious looking than the other one, I think. He's got a little bit more of a different expression on his face. He's, he's thinking deep thoughts. What? No, I'm just trying to think what he's saying. I don't know what he's thinking in his head. He's just thinking he's a little, he's a little, he's a little upset. A little miffed but, about something. Yeah, he's a, he's a little bit. I'm going to bring his... Somebody got into his down. clover or something like that. I, I don't think know. so. I'm going to bring the muzzle down so that he's maybe not looking so mean, mad. Bring some white down there. Soften that up so that it's a little bit more curved. So he looks like he's smiling a little bit, maybe. A little bit white down on his lip, bottom of his lip. Okay, we're about to, ready to add whiskers here. I'm going to add some of this light color to the top of his paws here. Okay, somebody asked if uh, they don't have Naples mm -hmm. yellow, how would they mix it? It, um... I was looking that up. It's like, I think you can get a close color if you used uh, yellow oxide uh, and maybe a little cad yellow and white, something like that. It's a little bit more yellow than brown. You know, it's got, uh, this one's more on the brown side, you know, so this one's a little bit brighter than the yellow oxide, so. Few little I'm just blending in that shadow so it's not so like outlined looking. Give him a few little hairs on his chest here. not going too far up into the dark though because I don't want it to compete with that darkness so I want to keep it nice and dark up there so people are chatter wondering are we getting there are we almost we're almost there we're almost there almost finished yeah, almost excellent well I know ginger's coming on at 7 30 so I need to be done by then at least why what yeah. happened to then if well, we're, I mean, if we're a not a lot of the people like to watch both of us so oh well they're just gonna have to choose <laughs> we'll see who the real fans are <laughs> <laughs> we'll hold stick no. man until 729 uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> see who the real stick man fans are okay let me zoom out oh look at that face he's so cute all right, so I think we're pretty much done with the bunny face here. Um, I want to put a few more hairs in the ear, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of the raw sienna, and I'm going to put in some hairs on the inside of his ears here. 
feel like it's just a little too smooth all the way through there, so I just want to add a few little hairs. See, he's all fuzzy, and the inside of his ears are fuzzy too. Some, somewhat, at least on the outside edges, at least. Get some of that burnt umber. And there's a little dark, really dark area right up there. And a little bit dark right there. Okay. And I feel like that this transition is a little bit too abrupt, so I'm going to bring, soften that up a little bit. Bring some of that color from the body up here into the ears. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> Let's give him some whiskers. And I think I actually want to, before I do that, I think I want to add some shading. So I'm going to use the glazing medium in my burned umber. And I'm going to shade right here. Make it nice and dark right there and there. Just feel like it was a little bit too bright, darken up that chin, the bottom lip there too. There we go. Nope. Add a little bit of it under the eyes. A little bit on the sides of the face there. a little bit of it on the paws here too. Oops, off camera there, sorry. Grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium and tap in a little bit of that on the top of my paws. Somebody asked <clears throat> if they don't have glazing medium, what would be a good substitute? You could just use water. You could, you know, yeah, um, water will work, just don't thin it down too much, but it'll work the same. Okay, I'm feeling better about that now. There's just a little bit. Okay, so grab the black and unbleached, or and burnt umber. I'm going to mix kind of a dark, dark brown almost black. Use that for the whiskers and it needs to be super thin so that this brush can we we'll use the spotter again. They start kind of in a uh, along this outside edge so just inside in this kind of curved section here and they come up and around and they just follow that curve all the way down. And pull some in from inside and some from more farther out too, so they're not all lined up. I find when I'm doing these lines that it's the faster I do them, the better they come out. So just try to kind of, you can practice it a few times and then sort of do it. 
if you have a really thin brush, you're going to be able to get a good fine line on it. And then I'm going to put a few little just hair marks like whiskers, little dabs right there at the bottom. Okay. Some of them come pretty far out, too, so I'm going to bring some of these really far out to make sure they connect to something. There we go. All right, so there's our bunnies. Let's give them a couple of daisies and we'll be done. Oh, look what I got black on here. How'd I do that? There's no telling. You asked me like I was paying attention. No, I know. Me, you know, I do it every time. That was a rhetorical question. I thought it was artistic addition. You thought, yeah. It's something about eternity slipping away or something, you know, something deep. <laughs> something deep. Yeah. <laughs> Sim symbolic of the yeah. oncoming night and darkness. <laughs> <laughs> there must be cats around, is what. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the poor bunnies don't even come around anymore. Poor Oliver, our cat, it just takes care of that. He doesn't mess with the squirrels, though. But. There's no bunnies. All right, so I'm going to grab my white here, try to get a good white, and I've got my number four round. So a nice uh, round brush is really key for these daisies. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the stems first. I'll grab my need some more phthalo green. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that with my burnt umber just to kind of tone it down so that it's not like a circus green. Grab some of that glazing medium to make it blendable. Okay. And then I'm going to add, this is my angle brush here. I'm going to just add a few like grass strokes. And just holding it on its edge here to pull some grasses. And then pulling these long stems for the daisies. I've just got three that I'm going to do. So I'm going to do one here, one here, and one over here. All right, so you're going to see. Figure out your center and you're going to set down your brush and point it towards that center. You set it down, let the bristles flare out and kind of pull as you lift. Um, if you've got a good brush, it's key to this, to getting the, these correct and you probably need to turn your canvas. I'm not doing that, but I really need to. There we go. This one I'm just going to do it kind of <clears throat> facing up and out. So we're only seeing this kind of the daisy from the side, sort of leave a little space between the petals that'll kind of help give it some visual breathing room. I did a whole mural with these daisies on 
I was up on a ladder for two days. I did a border in some a little girl's room with daisies and lilacs. A lot, a lot of daisies. Basil. It was fun, but there was a lot of daisies. Okay, then I'm going to grab my yellow oxide and add a little bit of white to it. Use that for the center of my daisies. This one is just kind of a side swipe. I'm going to grab my quinacridone magenta and mix that with it. And use that on one side of it. Just the underside of these daisies to give it a little bit of a shadow. Now I'm going to use the tip and just kind of tap in what? Kevin, you keep laughing. I crack myself up sometimes. Okay. So I miss out on all of this fun stuff. Okay, we're done. Uh, no, we're not. Oh. Stick okay, man, stick get in. him in there. Let's go. All right, all right. You got uh, three minutes. Stick man is getting... Stick man in... Stick Cat. And Stick Cat. Debut appearance. Yes. Stick Cat. So what do I do? Bunny? We'll just we'll just do some daisies. Some daisies? Okay. Yeah, we'll do some do some daisies. I'll do some yellow daisies. Make sure it's on camera. Maybe zoom in, I don't know. So they can get a real No, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, because the cat ran out for all the bunnies, so so we'll just do some daisies here by the kitty. Oh, I will try that again. Whoops, that's never good to hear well, when you're no, doing my, stick man. My water got in it. You're not on camera either. Oh, sorry. Okay. Jeez, Hold come on. on, really? People hung around this long. True. You're hiding it from them. Okay, here's our little daisy. There you go. Hi. Is that better? See? The kitty's got something to sniff. We'll give it a center. Give it a little pink center. There we go. Cute. All good right, then. that's good. That's great. All right, the people are happy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for sticking around with us tonight and watching. We really appreciate you. And uh, thanks to my Patreon folks that have been supporting us this month. It's been really great um, getting to know you on our Facebook page. And we will see you on Saturday for another video. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be painting, but I'll be posting that link soon. Uh, so we'll be here one way or another. Hopefully it'll be something you're interested in. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.